Have you ever walked into an Ulta Beauty and came across this brand and was really considering purchasing an affordable body butter? Or were you someone that was approached by a friend who was trying to encourage you to start an at-home business under the company, The Body Shop? Whatever reason you're clicking on this video, you're probably curious on why I'm covering this company that has been around for so long and has been all about providing wonderful, healthy health and wellness products to you and everyone you know. Well, today we're gonna be diving into The Body Shop because you may not know that there's a lot of dark history around Around this company, starting from how the entire company was developed and the truth behind it, the toxicity around their products, and the very dangerous, problematic business opportunity. We're diving into it all. So today, let's talk about the dark and unclean secrets of the body shop. Well, hello everyone, it's Isabella here and welcome back to the channel. So today's video, you guys, we're doing a little bit of a deep dive on a company many of us know, have seen in Ulta and have honestly probably purchased from. We're gonna be talking about the body shop. So, ooh, this one I've been dying to talk about, you guys. We are talking about a multi-level marketing company, its messy history, problems with it, how the compensation plan is run, and so much more. Now, I have a lot that I wanna talk about because this is a company that honestly has flown under the radar for a long time and me personally, Actually, I didn't know that this was an MLM for a while. Now, again, I had a lot of you guys suggesting this topic, so I was like, oh my God, yeah, I can cover it. However, like, again, it's one of those where you just see it because it's a bunch of products that honestly people would purchase, and then you have no idea it's connected to an MLM, and what's worse, you don't even know the dark history connected to it. So that's what we're talking about today. We're gonna talk about the shady history of the body shop and what's really problematic about the company. So my vlog channel, podcast, and merch are in the description below, and now let's get into it. Real quickly though, I want to stop and take a moment to thank today's sponsor. Everyone, so real quickly, I want to hop on here and talk about something that I am so excited about. So here's the deal, okay? A lot of you guys have been asking me if I'm ever going to have like a channel membership or if I'm ever going to offer something along those lines, right? I've been trying to find a more creative way of approaching it that would be more cost effective for people. I'm so excited because a brand reached out to me and they are finally creating something that is accessible to everyone and is going to be so wonderful. I'm so excited. Today, let's talk about Vivi. So if you guys do or don't know, Viffy is a brand new platform that is offering memberships and access to creators. Viffy is a new premium content web that is allowing everyone to have access to content creator memberships in a very fun and new way. So the beta launch is actually happening today and I am so excited about it. So here's the deal. How does this actually work though? And how is this easier for you guys? So instead of if I have a membership on here where you guys have to pay a certain amount every single month, Viffy is connected to a growing network of stores and places that we all shop through every single day throughout the month. All you have to do is shop at places that you regularly go to and then you immediately have access to content creator memberships, which is so fun. They're doing so much right now with expanding their network of stores and trying to have a tour. This is so much more easier for everyone else and I am I'm very excited to be on. So if you guys wanna connect with me on a more personal level and see more behind the scenes, just fun content, me connecting with you guys, just hanging out, you know, things like that that you definitely can go over in the description below and get started. Thank you so much to Vivi for partnering with me and choosing me to be an individual who could be a part of this brand new, really cool idea. I love support new brands, new companies that are starting up and creating really great ideas. And this is a very exciting opportunity for me. So thank you so much to Viffy. And now let's get into today's video. So first of all, who is the body shop? What is the body shop? How did this even become? Originally, the story started according to their website in Brighton, England in 1976. It began with their founder, Dame Anita Roddick. Um, I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. If not, correct me on that, you know? <laughs> and her belief in something revolutionary. That business could be a force for good following her vision we've been rule breaking, never faking and changing, making for over 40 years. So honestly, with this company, it's really interesting because they have regular brick and mortar stores. So again, anyone can have access to it. And also when it comes to Ulta, they are in Ulta. So you can easily go in and purchase the body shop products and not even know that this is an MLM. Now, again, I want to get this out of the way and make this super clear before we dive into the rest of the details about this company. If you like the body shop, if you like the products, if you like any MLM products for that matter, I'm not going to dog on you. That's not what I'm here to do. I think it's important though to just talk about the history and the problems with it. But again, like if you like a product, I am not gonna hate on you for that. It's perfectly fine, okay? And this is actually, speaking of, this is a very fascinating company because this is one that a lot of people can have access to easily without the MLM side. However, we're gonna cover MLM side and the foundation of the company. The body at home side, which is the multi-level marketing aspect, did not get incorporated into the company until 1994. So they were in business for a while so they even started the MLM side of things, which honestly, 
personally is very upsetting to me because me personally, if you're all about changing and revolutionizing the beauty industry and creating good and making products that are great for individuals, then wouldn't you want to stick with a business model that could be ethical and everything? And if you want to focus on a company, for example, and be able to develop something great, you would really want to also focus on the business side where people are getting properly compensated. There's good vacation times, like paid maternity and paternity leave, like things like that you would want to focus on. And so that's why it's fascinating to me how they move to the MLM aspect. Now, here's the part that many of my regular viewers know, but I always include it because I want to make sure that people are aware. I really want to do my very typical spiel of why multi-level marketing companies are bad. So if you guys are my regular viewers, go down to the timestamp and skip on over so that way we can get into the regular goods. But for those of you who have no idea and are like, why does she not like MLMs? What are the problem with MLMs? Like they can't be that bad, can they? I'm here to tell you, you've been lied to. So according to FTC, majority of participants in multi-level marketing companies make absolutely nothing. And the problem with that is additionally, there's many different sources and studies that have been able to show that even if you work really, really hard, even if you have game plans, even if you work at it for a long time, that does not mean there's going to be any return financially. Now, actually, additionally, a lot of people who participate in MLMs, they lose money as well, which is a really dangerous statistic. So with something so common that people have been roped into frequently, it's very upsetting to me how the failure rates are so high, yet it's not talked about enough in my opinion. Now, again, I'm not here to in any way blame you if you've been a part of a company or you have lost money. That's something that happens so frequently and many people are victims of multi-level marketing companies. You have a higher chance statistically of making money from gambling, which I don't recommend, but just to show the severity of this. And you have a higher chance of making money from a small business or even joining a no product based pyramid scheme, which speaking of pyramid schemes, let's talk about pyramid schemes in general, just to get this kind of out of the way. Okay. Now I talk about this because there's some people who are inside of multi-level marketing companies that when they hear this data and they hear the information I'm sharing, they might be able to step back and see internally if they're involved with an MLM, if their company may be participating in multi-level marketing habits, you name it. And I think it's important because the more education we have, the better and more self-aware people can be and hopefully get out of problems when they see it. So there's a big rebuttal that I see very frequently in this industry is MLMs cannot be pyramid schemes because they're illegal. Well, yes, pyramid schemes can be illegal. You can actually fall under the pyramid scheme category if you have a main income maker that is focused on recruitment. So if your main money maker or the company's main money maker is not just strictly sales or majority retail sales, and most of it is from getting people into a system, purchasing starter kits, etc., that is where we fall into major and dangerous problems. So that's kind of what I want to get out of the way, how you can be a product-based pyramid scheme. That is a thing, but your money is going to be literally pulled mainly from recruiting people. So keep that in mind. But with that, as we know, I want you guys to keep that in mind as we go throughout this entire video, because again, multi-level marketing companies are not close at all to being ethical. But additionally, a lot of people who are in these companies that are running it like a business aren't doing so well. Now, let's get into the products. So I love talking about the products. I'm able to kind of see if they're marketable, if they do well, and you know, my personal thoughts about it, because this can kind of really help determine if this is a good company. Because for me, if the products are really good and marketable, it's honestly going to be beneficial for individuals who want to join the company because they're easier to sell. Now, the products itself, they have makeup, they have body, they have skincare, they have so many different lines and the concept of green and health and wellness and having good ingredients, that all is great and perfectly fine. And additionally, I've heard incredible reviews on these products. Again, I have tried some before and I've actually really liked them. The price point I think is pretty decent for what you're getting. I think it's a good idea. So the entire product like lineup and across different categories is really, really good. However, this is when it becomes a big problem for people who want to join the MLM. A lot of people are not going to just willingly purchase products from a consultant when they can get a far better deal at Ulta, for example. So let's say if I were to want to purchase from a consultant, um, like, I don't shit, maybe like a body cream. Okay. And then if I want to purchase from Ulta, I am a frequent Ulta shopper. Okay. Like I love Ulta so much. Their reward system is so good. Oh my God. I get free shipping. I get coupons every time I purchase. Like they are good at offering deals. And additionally, they offer sales. Even I've seen sales on body shops so many times, whereas with purchasing from a consultant, it's not as good of a deal. So anything you're getting a better deal from going through their brick and mortar stores or simply through Ulta, for example, instead of going through a consultant, because if anything, when I go and purchase a product from Ulta, no one's sitting there trying to recruit me into an MLM and incentivize to recruit me into an MLM. Whereas a lot of you guys know, talking to some people in MLMs, they're more inclined to share with you about the business opportunity, or it can get spammy, it can get sketchy, and it can also be more expensive, which is not what a lot of people want to deal with. Well, yes, I think the products are pretty damn good from what I've personally seen. And you know, comparable to a lot on the market, I would still say that for the business opportunity, it's not good in any way. 
because they're so accessible in so many other places. Another great example of this is actually Beauty Counters. They are a multi-level marketing company that has pushed their products into Ulta and I think at one point Sephora. And this is something that has negatively impacted their consultants. Now, here is where the bulk of this video is going to be taking place. We are going to be talking about the legal and controversial issues when it comes to the company. So I'm really wanting to zone in on this because this is probably, this is the most fascinating thing to me because it's very hard for me to find companies that have thorough investigations by other researchers, for example, or other people are trying to write articles and expose them. And it's really telling with this article because this article is shocking at what it aired out about this company and how it is not at all what is being marketed off to you. In 1994, a business ethics expose was wrote. So it says in September of 94, Business Ethics Magazine published an investigative article entitled Shattered Image. Is the body shop too good to be true? Now here's the deal. This is one of those articles that's like locked up. So you have to like drop $45 to buy the thing, which is mm -hmm, drives me crazy. So thank you for supporting my channel because I can buy these damn articles and read it. <laughs> The article was a thorough investigation on the entire ethics of the body shop. We're talking from products. We're talking from how everything's developed to the origination of the company. And what's even crazier about this article is the individuals who are backing up these claims, providing sources and corroborating with these statements are people who were majorly involved with the body shop. We're talking former CFOs, PR directors, and many people who were part of the company or even best friends with the CEO. That is how serious it is. John, who is the author, really did a thorough job of finding tons of different sources. So again, it's going to be very difficult, in my opinion, to say that everyone is like completely lying when you have so many people who are literally working for the company and all of them have a very similar experience of negativity. Nothing's good enough. And there's always a problem and an ethics issue. The entire company is all about talking about health and wellness, creating cleaner, more environmentally friendly products, just a lot of good things that we see. And honestly, a lot of buzzwords that we see when it comes to products that are being marketed off to us in the beauty industry. Now, with that, again, they blew up and were a part of, I think, an early movement of creating better products pushed into the now of what we know today as heavy greenwashing companies that really follow this type of marketing tactic and so much more. So they were known very well for having good products, trying to fight against animal cruelty and so much more. So with that, you would think that they'd be trustworthy. Nope. Okay. So John reported that Anita Roddick, founder of the Body Shop International in the UK, had actually stolen the store design, marketing concept, and most of the product lines from the body shop. So originally, Roddick traveled to San Francisco in around 1970, where they came across a small business. Now, the small business was in Berkeley, California by Peggy Short and Jane Saunders, who started a French style perfume store. So customers could do their own blending, which, oh my God, I would have ate that up. That would have been so fun, right? And so then Roddick going to visit actually fabricated her story of traveling the world, discovering exotic beauty ingredients. And that is how she found the body shop. So what apparently actually happen, and other sources have said this is to be true, Roddick actually went to visit the shop and purchased many different products and was super inspired by the company. And allegedly the wheels started turning, other people that were with her on this trip kind of were looking into it, and the idea of the body shop developed and became what it is today. Now, Roddick apparently literally took the idea, the recipes, every, like anything you could think of, the packaging, the coloring of the logo, like everything apparently was snatched from the small business. And so essentially what happened is Roddick went over to the UK and was like, we're going to make the line. And so the line entire company was developed down to the same wording and lettering in catalogs and campaigns. That's how spot on and specific this stuff was apparently, and which is insane to me. You guys know when it comes to the UK, there's different like laws and things that you can do, trademarks, etc. So what had happened was years and years kept going on and the entire company was growing. The body shop was progressing and doing really, really well. And so they wanted to expand and they wanted to move to the US. So what happened was Roddick actually approached the original people who created the small business and offered them, I think around a little over 3 million for the trademark. The small business owner stated that they just literally felt like they could not fight this at all. They just realized that a major corporation with a lot of money, right? A lot of money to waste, a lot of time, a lot of around and find out mentality. That was not something that they thought that they could fight against, which is absolutely heartbreaking. So they ended up selling the trademark and changed their company name. And they actually renamed their five stores to Body Time, which is, that's just devastating for a business to have to 
go out of their way to completely make changes. Like, Roddick apparently fabricated the story and the origination of the company and allegedly stated that she traveled the world, found incredible ingredients, and was like, oh my God, I have this brilliant idea. We need to do all these things. Allegedly, come to find out, everything was directly copied, mimicked, recipes were pulled, and a small business, from what I'm seeing, was completely destroyed and derailed, all from a greedy individual. We can see right now, the foundation of this company apparently is not that good. So if the foundation and ethics aren't there, it's not surprising me that they're a multi-level marketing company, but it also further doesn't surprise me about their approach to their products and ingredients. What's really sad and heartbreaking about this is there's no happy ending for that small business because they ended up shutting down in 2018, which just absolutely devastates me because they had an incredible idea. And from what we knew, they were the ones that literally made it to where the body shop could come to life, that the entire concept could exist as a whole. And without them, probably that goofy ass couldn't come up with a good business idea on her own. When this article came out, it was further discussing how apparently the ingredients were not that good. There was actually some quotes from other professionals who said how they really like to cut corners and kind of cheap out when it comes to their ingredients. There's a lot of fillers, extra things to see if they can get by and make it to where it's pretty affordable so they can make as much profit from what I'm seeing. From many different sources, they're saying that the body shop is not offering what they stated and have kind of just utilized the greenwashing concept to an entirely different level. This was an article that allegedly the body shop threatened the author over. However, I'm so glad it was actually finally published some years later. But what I will say though, is this, all of this entire mess actually made it to where the stock of body shop dropped like 50%. That is a shit ton to drop. Wow. But this article did have a long lasting impact. And here's my other thing as well. If it was a lie and if it wasn't true, they could have that author like that's that if it was completely false and if there was no truth behind it that would be some serious defamation going on but the fact that there was no defamation case I think in my opinion that's telling me that there was a lot of truth behind it and so therefore you know I don't think they would really win in a defamation case when there's no defamation to begin with which makes me in my opinion to believe this all to be true there was another quote that I actually wanted to read off as well this is Roddick's substantiated claims and inaccurate reports and popular articles and even some university cases studies that Roddick's The Body Shop gave most of its profit to charity. Documents from the Britain's Charity Commission show that Roddick's company gave nothing to charity over its first 11 years and was penurious in its philanthropy thereafter. The Body Shop also faced millions of dollars in claims by disenchanted franchisees. That's a, that's a mouthful right there. So apparently they weren't doing a lot of the things that they claimed they were doing and there was just a bunch of money all of a sudden not going to charities. Now another issue that I wanted to kind of bring up that was a really big thing. Now here's the deal. L'Oreal, you you guys know L'Oreal is a massive, massive organization that has bought out different companies. They do have animal testing, which is a an issue and a big problem and pisses me off to no end. L'Oreal needs to get on that. Like, I'm sorry, I can't mentally comprehend how, like a company that makes that much money could be like, oh, we're still gonna animal test. Like, get. That's my own little two cents. L'Oreal, in March of 2006, the body shop agreed to a 652.3 million takeover by L'Oreal. So Roderick's made 130 million from the sale alone. So the sale caused some major media controversy, particularly surrounding L'Oreal's use of animal testing. So although L'Oreal ceased animal testing itself in 1989, the company had begun selling its products in China in 97, where the law required cosmetics to be tested on animals before sale to the public. And if L'Oreal says, oh, we don't do that, your company still fucking does it, but stop selling the shit there. I don't know. I think they're too greedy to do that. Roddick stated that she believed the sale would allow her to be a Trojan horse within the larger company working through the body shop to improve its standard on animal testing and environmental issues. I'm sorry. That's such a cop out in my opinion. Like you are like, oh God, I mean, they're kind of better now. So we're going to still sell the company off. I don't think that was necessary. So many aspects from the history of it to the selling to L'Oreal. I think all of it was just cash grab, how to get as rich as possible. And I don't think it was actually prioritizing health and wellness of many people, the environment, and anyone as a whole. Now, again, I'm not trying to shit on you if you purchase from L'Oreal products. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is it's, it's just a really interesting thing how she was very, like, very adamant. Like, that was the biggest foundation of her, like, entire company was we need to improve every aspect and be the best that we can be and look at this great idea I have and then sell it off to L'Oreal, which still does a lot of animal testing, which honestly was complete opposite what they were doing. Like, I know this sounds stupid, but that's like me wanting to sell off my channel for marketing purpose to a multi-level marketing company or a company that like beauty counter that does some brick and mortar, but also does multi-level marketing company. Like that makes no 
fucking sense at all. I digress. Anyways, let's keep going. So here's the deal, okay? The multi-level marketing side in the United States is non-existent anymore. So I think it was like maybe at the beginning of 2023, they actually sent out some information saying that the multi-level marketing aspect in the United States specifically was not gonna be anymore. So they sent out like a little informational packet and was like, oh shit, well, we're done, goodbye. Very odd and sudden and interesting. However, they are still running in the UK and Australia and other areas from what I'm hearing. So here's the deal. We're actually gonna talk about the UK compensation plan and I wanna kind of discuss the income and problematic issues of the company. So we already talked about history, products and so much more. And I wanna talk about the compensation plan and how you actually make money in the multi-level marketing company. And I wanna highlight why this is a very big problem. So we already know the issues and statistics when it comes to MLMs. And additionally, we also know that there is no income disclosure statement, which is a big problem. Real quickly, if you guys don't know, an income disclosure statement is pretty much a little chart that's like, hey, this is how much money our people in the company are making. And this is kind of what you could expect per rank. Most of the time it shows a very low amount. The Body Shop does not have it, which I think is a huge red flag because you should be transparent about how well you're doing. And I don't see any transparency. So that already leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Let's look at the compensation plan, which shows you specifically how you make money. Now, as I'm pulling this up, one of the biggest red flags that I wanna say is when the majority income sources are recruiting people are only solely connected to having a team, that's my big issue. So with going through this compensation plan for the UK version, it says six ways to rack up earnings when you put your passion to work, consultant discount, a personal discount to use, personal sales rebate, a percentage rebate pa paid back to you when your customers buy from you personally, personal sales bonus, additional bonuses available from five to 15%. When you achieve certain sales, thresholds each month, central team bonuses, a bonus paid on sales generated by the consultants in your central team, generation bonuses, bonuses available from the sales generated by your downline leaders teams, and then leadership bonuses, bonuses available to leadership ranks based on your overall business and sales performance. So here's the deal. Looks like we have three out of the, it's like half of the ways of earning money, it looks like are mainly on a team. So from the get go, this does not look like in any way a pyramid scheme in my opinion, but that doesn't change the fact though that the studies show most of these companies do not perform well for you financially. So still the data doesn't change. However, it's honestly more relieving to me to see that there's more ways to make income from personal sales, which is good that that's, we like that. I, I hate when companies are shitty. So it does actually say that you can earn up to 35% from selling products right over here. It talks about how weekly earning opportunities, a 20% consultant discount per personal rebate. So monthly qualification requirements, you need to achieve 125 personal volume points in one calendar month, which looks like that's kind of what you need to stay active and keep going. So up to 35%. I think that does depend on your rank, how much you're selling, etc. So it looks like the more you sell, the more that you can earn. Now it goes on to say team building and growing on the road to leadership. It does discuss how you can earn up to 3% on team sales, which in my opinion, that's actually, I think pretty low, I would say, because a lot of companies have more and they have more weight on recruiting a team. It does say that star beauty consultant represents the first step in rank of becoming a leader. You've come a long way indeed by continuing to offer the opportunity to others and building your own team. There's so much to look forward to and we're here to support you all the way. So your earning possibilities, weekly earning op possibilities are 20% consultant discounts. Then you have your monthly earning, which is personal sales bonus, and then your central team bonus. So this is an example structure. It says that you can, looks like you can have three consultants underneath you, a monthly qualifications, you're gonna need 400 in personal volume, 2000 in central team points volume, and three active consultants are above legs. Now, this is kind of where I have an issue. We're discussing some of the ranks and how to hit it. And a big red flag that I do have is when you need recruitment in order to grow through the ranks. So that really bothers me because to me, then there is more of a heavier dependency on recruitment because if you aren't able to strictly, and I mean strictly grow through the ranks with just sales alone and personal sales alone, I don't like that. And that's giving me the illusion that there's a major weight on recruitment because for example, if you can't find any people that can't strictly personally sell and grow throughout the company, I think that's a problem in itself. But then too, it's a really big red flag when in order to even grow and have a chance of getting any form of income, right? If the chances are small, but any form of income, you're kind of put into a corner when you have to recruit that in order to hit the next rank. And that to me is very unethical and not appropriate at all. Now, again, it's going on to actually show you how when you hit different ranks to hit like Ruby group leader or maybe platinum leader, there's more incentives it looks like in order to grow and you get additional bonuses, it says, if you hit this first time advancement. So for example, I really wanna show you guys the Ruby group leader. Now, majority of people are not gonna hit this high, but it says earn 
earn up to 3,000 on your first time advancement bonus. So it looks like you can get central team bonuses, generational bonuses, business development bonus, and a first time advancement bonus, which is around 3K, and not to mention personal sales and then your weekly earning opportunities. So again, that's like a lot of money off of a downline. And again, as I've said, I know some people will be like, well, the possibilities are endless. Not really. The compensation plan doesn't look like it is a good one in my opinion. And I do feel like, all right, my internal belief is most MLMs are pyramid schemes. That's just my personal belief. From what I'm seeing outwardly, it's not representing a pyramid scheme. Does it have a heavy weight on it? Yeah. I feel like it's almost like putting its big toe in the water of the pyramid scheme category. You know what I mean? So now let's finally wrap this up and talk about my final thoughts. So final thoughts with this is one, the switch from the multi-level marketing company to not being a multi-level marketing company in the United States, I think is a really great representation of how these companies are not very stable when it comes to income, side hustles, etc. Because one, the studies show that they're not good for income. But two, if you, let's say, do grow on the smallest chance of recruiting a shit ton of people and making things up to get people interested, and then you suddenly grow and you're the top 1%, the company could easily just say, actually, buy and just completely cut you off. Because I can't even imagine being a leader in the company only to get a random email that looked like, look at that, you're completely done. Like, that's it. I think it just shows you that there's not a lot of ethics behind it. And speaking of ethics, I think the ethics around the company and how they behave, how they create the products, how the entire company started, I don't think there's a lot of ethics there. And I feel like they claim that they care. Meanwhile, it's just cheap shit, in my opinion. And it's just really ridiculous to say the least. So that's kind of my main two cents in the body shop and everything. I am very happy that you guys are here to learn and listen. If you guys have a personal experience with body shop, comment down below. I'd love to hear. If you guys like the products, comment down below. If you guys learn anything new about the body shop or if you're in different countries and are a part of this like let me know i'd love to hear it out a little bit so that was it for today's video thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to like comment share and subscribe to the channel and i will see you guys in the next video